we meet again at last. The circle is now complete. What's the world coming to? Well, you got a problem with what I did, Anthony? Oh, no, hey, no. Fucking rat anyway, so family's all rats. rats. Could have brought to be a rat. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Now you're gonna dig the fucking thing. You're gonna dig the hole. You're gonna do it. I got no fucking line. You're gonna do it. I'll dig the fucking hole. I don't give a fuck. I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was pure and simple. Jesus Christ, Mister, you okay in there? Ah, put some Disney coffee around here someplace. Do you any idea what the cost of your actions is? What their effect might be? Are you to give them hope? What do you give them? We give them happiness. Welcome, everybody, to episode 97 of the Cinefellas Podcast. I'm Bob Ward, and today's episode, I'll be playing the interview I had with writer-director Jeff Brown. We discuss his upcoming Shudder-exclusive movie, The Beach House. We talk about where he came from and what his inspirations were for this film and what his outlook is going forward. Sit back, have a listen. Make sure you watch Jeff Brown's The Beach House. Hey, Bob. Hey, Mr. Brown. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I had to tell you, um, so I, uh, I got your screener the other day, and I sat and watched it, and I'll be honest, I sat and watched it twice. <laughs> um, awesome. uh, to, um I have to say, uh, I'm a diehard horror fan, uh, old-school horror fan, so I got a real cool uh, vibe of, like, um, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, Odd People kind of thing. All it was missing was uh, Donald Sutherland, you know? <laughs> but yeah. it was yeah. so good. good. Cool, awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I love Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That's a, I like uh, several ver- I like various versions of it. The '50s one, I love the Donald Sutherland one, and I, I like the Abel Ferrara one from the '90s too. Oh, I almost forgot all about that one. That's right. No, it's what? really good. <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take a. I'm gonna have to take a gander at it. I have, my, uh, I have a couple friends that are just now getting into um, old school horror movies, so I'm definitely gonna have to film that one. Yeah, yeah, but I do good. Have a, I do have a couple questions for you. Go ahead. First off, um, I know you spent most of your career in location management and stuff like that. Was your dream always to be a writer director? Like, was that always the end game, or was this just uh, like the next step where you were just like, oh, this just so happens to be here as well? It was. It was always the end game. Uh, I, I would the way doing locations you freelance, so it's like you do a job and you kind of have time off between them. So I would do a movie or two, and then I would write scripts in between and and. It took me a long time to kind of get my writing up to like a professional level, let's say. So it, it was just kind of a lot of trial and error. It was just kind of developing my ideas, developing what kind of movies I want to tell and how I would tell them. And so I would do, you know, these production jobs and then just kind of work towards making my own projects. And so, uh, you know, kind of a decisive moment was when I, I made a short that really led to the beach house. I think the short, we finished it in like 2013 or and that that was kind of the real kicker. But it was another thing where I would finished a, a production job and then shot the short over a weekend, really, and then just, you know, cut it with friends and did it for no money. And then that really led to uh, the beach house because trying to get a movie made based on script alone is, is very, very hard. Um, so I would recommend making a short or some sort of proof of concept to show kind of, you know, in a nice five to ten minute burst what what the movie is you're trying to make uh and so you know the movie isn't a sequel or a prequel to beach house but there are you know similar you know an accent on mood and and there's some a little bit of uh of gross in it which was you know kind of always i i, I like seeing practical effects I, I i love that stuff in in science fiction and horror films so i always wanted that to be part of the movie yeah, yeah honestly i think that's a last lost art so many people rely on cgi and over the top stuff when Less is more, especially when you, like you said, it's practicality, stuff you could have actually seen, you know. And plus, uh, I don't know where you shot this thing, but it was absolutely beautiful. Like, it oh, really set the tone perfect. Like, it just, you felt like it's this small, you know, community and stuff like that. Like, it just brought you in right, it was almost like another character in the movie. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that was, uh, you know, that was from the intention because when, when you don't have a lot of money, you're kind of taking things as they are as opposed to creating them yourself. I grew up near Lake Michigan, so I always kind of grew up near water, near beaches. Uh, you know, Lake Michigan is, is big, so it's not an, there's not the tides and the waves of the ocean, but it's, it's still a, a significant body of water. So I grew up going to Lake Michigan, and then I moved to uh, the East Coast when I was 18, so I, I've been around you know, the Jersey Shore, Cape Cod, which is where we shot the film, and even out in Long Island, I'd been to all these areas, and, I, and that was definitely always from the from the conception of the movie was to have it set in a beach community, and especially off season where I, I've been to these places when no one's around, and and there, it's a it 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 gives it a natural uh, eeriness that that when you don't have a ton of money, you're going for those sort of like natural. Um, things that you can capture as opposed to, to creating. So that was, it was just really from the, get, from the get go, the DNA of the, of the project had to do with the, the setting and the location, you know, speaking a lot. Uh, so that, that was, was really part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, it felt real organic, you know what I mean? But yeah, the eeriness was, was there. You didn't see other people walking around. It wasn't a lot of people on the beach. Like, it felt so isolated right then and there that it, I think, yeah, I think it definitely built up some tension with you knowing that something's going to happen and you have this impending doom and yet there's nobody there. There's no lifeline or anything like that. You know, isolation is scary <laughs> as, as we've all, <laughs> as we've all kind of found out uh, the hard way, you know? Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's those natural the eeriness, like sucking the life out of an area. Um, and, and I, I do feel that in, in life and, and, it, you know, as, as we've seen that we're kind of being forced into isolation, but the way with, how we interact with technology and interact with other people, I think, is leaning towards more of an isolated environment as opposed to a communal thing, which, you know, I, it's, there's good things and bad things. There's no, there's no answer to any of this. But that was just something that I think is a reflection of, of the world around us is, is just people in isolated houses where no one is outside is, is kind of the reality we're dealing with. And then we just saw it, un, unfortunately, this year, um, you know, because of, of the situations around us. Absolutely. Now, so, like you said, you have a, you had a, you know, you had a, essentially a very small cast, uh, including the scenery and the atmosphere. Now, I gotta say, when, when a movie like that, you're focusing on, I mean, for the most part, it was two people, but even when the four, I'm a huge Jack, or Jake Glover fan, so, <laughs> so I kind of fanboyed out. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I love the Snyder's uh, Dawn of the Dead. But yeah. what sold you on, uh, Noah and all that? Like, what made you go, yeah? This, these are the people I need for this story where they're going to have to carry it. Noah was the first person I think cast. I met with him. Uh, I met with a couple young actors, but I met with him and I just liked him right off the bat. I, it was uh, as much as, you know, he's, he's got a great look, but he's just a, he's just a good guy. And, and we really hit it off. We have, you know, some similar interests. He's a musician, so we could talk music and he's a big big film guy he's really really well versed in film so that was another thing that i just felt comfortable with him uh right away when i first met him uh and he's he's much different than the character so it's like kind of a testament to his performance that he you know he's nothing like randall really uh you know for much better because randall's not the most sympathetic of characters and then uh liana was kind of we i looked at many many more young actresses uh, for that part, um, because there, there were some things that I really wanted the character to have. It, it's like she had to convey intelligence. And Liana kind of came after us as, in, in a way. I think she, she read the script and it was a, uh, she saw that it was a very good role to show off her abilities as an actress. Uh, she's in a couple other movies that came out. Uh, one called To the Stars, which is a much different character. But I, I think watching it, especially after, you know, uh, working with her on the beach house, I could just see her approach to acting in that film too. I thought she, I, I thought she did a really great job in that film, which I didn't see until after we'd shot. Um, but she gives a very haunting performance in that film. And, and, uh, you know, she, she can do a lot with a little, uh, you, you know, in terms of she's a very subtle and, and very kind of naturalistic actor. And she just completely, you, she's, she, you believe what she's saying, which was the most important thing to me, um, throughout the film. You know, she, she does a great job. She's really, kind of the anchor to everyone else's kind of around in her orbit. I mean, she is the main character, but um, she was just great. And she was a total trooper too throughout it. Yeah. I, this movie made me a fan of her in a big way. I'm going to have to check out that other film. One thing I, as the movie ended both times, 
I, I was left with the ending was so interesting. It was, it was different. And I know that obviously like this was your, essentially your baby. You wrote it, you directed it. What were you hoping the ending was going to make the audience feel or like, what do you want them walking away with? Like some people like when they're thinking about it, some people want them to be utterly speechless. What was your, like, what was the end game with this? Cause I, I absolutely loved it. And I wondered what your, um, like what you wanted people to like take away from the ending like that. If, if you, if you kind of get into cosmic horror and what it's doing in terms of, of, of man's place in the universe and really the, the scope of the universe and man in relation to it, you know, when we're, we're specks of dust, really, when you get into the, the whole size of everything, you know, the, the ending is supposed to really make you, you know, feel that way in terms of like kind of a, a fundamental belief, not belief in, but like adherence to what cosmic horror is trying to do. So you're, to me, I really wanted the audience to think about their place in the universe and, and hopefully how that affects the decisions they make in their life, you know, to kind of, you know, em- embrace the time that you have because it, it is very, very short. And so you should make the most <laughs> of any, of any opportunities, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Um, but, the, you know, and again, to, to, to convey that sort of thing, I think, under the, the you know, small movie with the, the setting and all that speaking so loudly, if I could have pulled that off, which it sounds like I think it has in some respect, I, I felt that that was a, a movie worth making and a movie that I, I wanted to see. And that, that's the bottom line is that the film is something that, that I wanted to see when I put on a movie at midnight and I have insomnia. If I put that on, I, I would want to see the beach house. I'd want to see something that takes me on that journey to have a very – intimate relationship with a film, uh, you know, in the dark by myself. That's, that's where I want to go. It's almost like you could, uh, I'm hoping this kickstarts the, um, the love affair again with, like you said, the cosmic horror, like the stuff that really made you take a step back and it's not someone coming to get you. It's not this, it's this whole entity, you know, this whole other being that's just fantastic. But I'll be honest, the last lines when she goes, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid chills went down my arm the entire time because I'm sitting there, I'm afraid. I'm sitting on a couch, <laughs> you know, and I'm watching that and I'm just like, oh, you know, it's just like you sat there and I was just, I myself was absolutely speechless and um, I, uh, I'm i doing a review. I, I, I'm shooting a review for it too and uh, I messaged my sister who's a huge horror movie fan as well and I said, look, there's a new movie coming out. It's fantastic and um I'm gonna be I'm gonna be rooting for you the whole time because honestly I love the fact that you went back to an old school idea and you like made it your own and I think that if enough people watch this movie it could kickstart that love affair with uh, this genre of horror that not a lot of many people talk about anymore. Uh, I, I think it's I think it's on its way. <laughs> I would love to see more of those movies. You know, uh, I, I think the horror genre is in a great place right now. I, I think. For the last five, six years, there's, there's just been a lot of really good ones. Uh, come, I love The Babadook, and it follows just very creative, stylish, and interesting films. And, and if, if our film is, is included in that, I, I feel that, you know, job well done. And the fact that it gave you chills, like, that is, that's where we're going, man. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I've watched horror movies. I'm 39 years old. I've been watching them since I was about five or six, and... I had to sit back and just kind of put my hands to my hair and went, holy, God. you know, like just, and that's what I need. I need to be, you know, you have that fear, you have this, but man, when you sit back and that movie just kind of lets the wind out of you, immediately you're going, oh, I need to see that again. I know there's something I missed. I know there's other answers out there that I did not catch the first time. And that's mm-hmm. why I went through with the second viewing. And I'll be honest, I was even more excited the second time. Yeah, it, it, I think it really lends itself to multiple viewing. You, and you'll see it's like everything there, everything is connected. It's not random and, and like they're, they, it all builds to the end of the movie. I like every line of dialogue pretty much. But you know, I, I wanted it to be subtle and, and, and I wanted the viewer to, to watch it again really. I, I've seen it more than anyone else on the planet. So, and I like it every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be, uh, trust me, I'm, I'm going to be singing its praises in the review, and uh, I think Shudder is the perfect place to, for someone to grab it because so many people love that app and, and the program, and Shudder's been putting out so many good properties that I think you're in good, com- you know, good company with this where people are going to go, you know, I like these originals. Let me give this a try. And I know a lot of old-school horror movie fans, uh, such as myself and the other people that review movies with me, I know they're going to be totally taken back with this and just, and with a big smile on their face at the end of it, you know? 
Yeah. After, of course, the chills and the Jesus, you know, like after that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's awesome. awesome. And also, I love the fact that you brought up, I'm a Chicago guy. So when you were talking about living around Lake Michigan, stuff like that, I'm like, yeah. Then I, as a kid, though, I'll be honest, I was terrified of Lake Michigan after hearing all the horror stories of uh, my great-grandmother lived in the city during Prohibition, all this stuff. So hearing the horror stories of, like, what was thrown into Lake Michigan, stuff like that, I was always terrified of the water as it was. So when you brought up Lake yeah, Michigan, I, I grew up Man, right there's a horror movie. Yeah, well, yeah, I grew up near the dunes in Indiana, so I, I went to we'd go to the dunes all the time when I was a kid growing up, and uh, yeah, weird things. You know, you go swimming there and you see the steel mills like right over there. You're like, uh, this is probably yeah, I'm gonna get a rash, I think. You know, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like we get out of Lake Michigan, and and uh, everyone else would do that rinse after you got out of the lake, just in case. You know, it's just in case. Yeah, exactly. Have you rained before or after? <laughs> cool. Well, like I said, I'll be rooting for you big time. It was a pleasure talking with you, and honestly, I I hope this isn't your uh, only film. And I oh, no. honestly, I have no doubt that you'll be making quite a few more. This is a true testament to your love of uh, horror as a as a whole. And honestly, I, I feel very uh, privileged that I got to watch it before a lot of other people. Awesome! Yeah, I'm, I'm thank you so much. I'm glad you like the movie. And yeah, we're I I got a couple more. Uh, in, you know. <laughs> coming at you hopefully sooner than later <laughs> all right well i'll I'll keep my uh i'll keep my uh, head on a swivel and hope that uh shutter reaches out to us again so i get to watch another jeff brown exclusive you know I've, i'll even have a shirt on with it <laughs> thank <laughs> well, you so thank much you so much for your time man